Welcome to the Disney Wedding Podcast, brought to you by Carrie Hayward's Fairy Tale Weddings Guide, the only guidebook and bridal organizer tailored exclusively to Disney's fairy tale weddings at Walt Disney World. I'm Carrie Hayward, and each week I feature a different aspect of Disney weddings, from the latest news, information, and money saving tips, to interviews with wedding vendors and real Disney brides and grooms. I also cover honeymoons, anniversaries, and engagements at the Disney parks and resorts. Join me now as the Disney Wedding Podcast celebrates romance at Disney destinations. Today on the Disney Wedding Podcast, I am speaking with Jasmine Navarro about her ceremony at the United Kingdom Courtyard in Epcot and her cake and champagne celebration at the Terrasse de Fleurs in Epcot as well. I thought you guys would be interested to hear about how she chose these locations and how she planned everything, especially with the COVID protocols in place, and how it all turned out. So welcome, Jasmine. Thank you. Nice to be here. I'm so glad you could be on the show today. I would love to start at the very beginning and find out how you and your husband decided you wanted to have your wedding at Disney. So I am a, an avid Disney fan. I have loved it my entire life. And it always seemed like something that, like, I when I first heard about Disney weddings, that I would want, but it wasn't really much like a reality until a few years ago when I started to actually look into it and decided if I keep it small that it was something that could be in the cards. And thankfully, everything fell into place and I was able to get married at Disney. That's great. How did your friends and family react when they found out where the wedding was going to be? They were in part surprised just because I'm the first person to have a destination wedding that I know of in my family and friend circle. But at the same time, they were like, oh, that's very you, Jasmine, because everybody knows how much I love Disney. <laughs> that's great. How many guests did you invite and how many were able to make the trip? Actually, I invited 16 people and somehow magically all 16 were able to go. I knew I wanted to keep it small even before everything with COVID happened. So thankfully, I did not have to alter my guest list once COVID hit. That's wonderful. Did you have to change any of your plans? Yes. So I feel like the actual wedding plans changed quite drastically. So I originally, I wanted the United Kingdom courtyard, but because of construction that was supposed to happen, it was denied and I was originally going to get married at the wedding pavilion. And then I had wanted a dessert party during the Epcot fireworks. So that was the original plan. But because there's no fireworks right now, we had to change it to that cake and champagne celebration. And since construction, kind of the plans changed at Epcot, United Kingdom became available. So we were able to get my first pick. That's wonderful. And how did you choose France for the cake and champagne celebration? I knew I wanted it in Epcot. And originally, I was going to do it at UK Lockside. I knew I wanted it at Epcot by the water. But with the COVID restrictions, we didn't all fit there. So it was my planner who was like, oh, we're moving it to France. And I was like, that's perfectly fine with me. I think the location's beautiful. Got it. Yeah, there's the, they have those planters, so you have instant color just already there that you don't have to pay for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, did you set up a room block for your guests? I did not. The more I looked into it, the more I felt like it would be easier for them and for me to just book separately, kind of the normal way. Right. Okay. How did you choose the day of the week and time of day, and did they change with the COVID plans? I'm currently in grad school, so I knew that my choices were limited. So I knew I wanted either early December or late January due to crowd levels normally being not too high around those times. And according to my school schedule, I felt like the 12th of January would fit perfectly. And then I picked that specific Tuesday because of the prices being a little bit lower on Tuesday. So the day did not change, thankfully, but just the hour changed. So since United Kingdom Pavilion is specifically has to be at 9 a.m., it was a morning reception when originally when I was going to get married at the wedding pavilion, it was going to be at noon. I see. Okay. 
And then did you add any kind of entertainment to the celebration? I did not. Originally, the I felt like the entertainment was going to be the fireworks, and I'm still a little bit sad that wasn't able to happen, but it was still a magical day, and we just kept it simple. That's great. And you do have the violinist from the ceremony who comes over for the celebration, so there's that. Actually, I was a little bit disappointed. I know that with Epcot, once the park opens, the violinist is supposed to leave, But for some reason, unknown to me, the violinist left after my ceremony and was not there at the celebration. Oh, no. Yeah, so I I was a little bit like after the fact, because in the moment, you know, I was overwhelmed, I was happy, but it was after the fact that I thought about it. And I was like, wait, where was the violinist during those first, you know, 30 minutes? Huh, interesting. Okay. Did you add any kind of floral and decor to your ceremony or your cake and champagne celebration? When it was going to be at the wedding pavilion, it was definitely on the table. But me and my husband thought that both locations were just beautiful on their own since it's outside in nature. So we decided to forego any decorations. That's great. Do you have any cake flavors you can recommend? One of the flavors I really liked, I did the churro flavored cake. And I did the white chocolate maple frosting in between. And... Pretty much when I was picking my flavors, I was like, I want something different that you don't normally find in the store. So I decided to go with, you know, the more out there flavors. And it it was a huge hit. That's so great to hear. Did you add any savory food to your cake and champagne celebration? We had a dining reservation shortly after. So we just decided to keep just the cake and the champagne. And then we went out to get food. Oh, that's great. Where did you go? We ate at Homecoming. Oh, nice. And you were able to make a reservation for your group size and everything? Yes. So at first, when I first called, they were like, oh, we might not be able to set everyone together since it's a big group. And I was totally fine with that. I understand regulations. But I guess we picked a good hour because they were able to get us in one big table. That's great. Now, can you give my listeners a timeline of how the day all fit together? So I woke up (laughs) at around... 2 a.m. and it very long getting ready process and then my now husband got picked up at around 6 45 because we were we did a first look at the wedding pavilion and we thought it was a great idea since we were originally going to get married there that we could at least do our first look there so he got picked up got taken over there and then I got picked up at around 7 10 in the morning got taken to the wedding pavilion we did our first look we absolutely loved it and then we got just a few pictures inside of the wedding pavilion We then got transported to Epcot and we were able to take some gorgeous pictures at the surrounding pavilion. So we took some in France and we took some in Canada. Once our pictures were taken, we then went to for our ceremony at, we started getting ready for that. I want to say, but around 8.30, then at nine, the ceremony started. Immediately after the ceremony, we got pictures with family, friends, and then they got taken to our cake and champagne location, which was Terrace de Fleurs. And me and my husband stayed back in the pavilion and we got some more pictures taken, just the two of us around the United Kingdom pavilion. We then joined them at the cake and champagne celebration. And we immediately cut the cake. My only thing that I would warn, I'm not sure if this is with everybody. I love Terrace de Fleurs because of the garden. I don't know what they're called, like the areas with the flowers in between. But there was never like a clear moment where someone said like, oh, this is the cake cutting time. And some of my guests were sitting behind these green areas and they had no view of the cake table so they said they completely missed the cake cutting because they were unaware that it was happening so that was just a small minor detail that I would warn against even though the location is beautiful we then just kind of had our cake champagne and we finished that at around 11 and then from there we all just Went back to the rooms, relaxed a little bit, and we went to our reservation at Chef Arts. That's great. Can you talk a little bit about what the COVID policies were like at the time of your wedding? 
my planner that I was emailing was not present at the actual wedding. I had two different coordinators at the wedding site. And due to this, I did notice some inconsistencies from what I heard in the email to what happened the day of. But the main things were, of course, we had to be socially distanced at all times. And we had all my guests had to be wearing their masks at all times. So one inconsistency was that they, during the emails, they said that my guests could walk down the aisle without a mask on as long as they were walking down by themselves. And then as soon as they were seated, they had to put their mask back on. But the day of the ceremony, they were told they had to wear their masks walking down the aisles. And I had to kind of for a second put my foot down and be like, oh, my mom who's walking me down the aisle, like I was told she didn't have to wear a mask. And they were like, and they allowed that. So my mom was able to not wear her mask while she walked down the aisle with me. The chairs were all social distanced and then pictures were social distanced, but they were a everyone was able to take off their masks while their pictures were being taken. And I do want to say it was enforced pretty well. One of the coordinators was holding a sign the entire time in the back that said like social distance, keep your face mask on. And they would, if they noticed someone wasn't forgot to like put their mask back on after a picture, they would politely come over and just be like, oh, could you put your mask back on? But completely polite about it. And then during the ceremony, the tables were social distanced. We were allowed to mingle, but we had to be six feet away from the table. And we had to be wearing our masks when we were not eating cake or drinking champagne. Okay, great. And then when did you do your Magic Kingdom portrait session? And what were the rules like for that? I did my Magic Kingdom photo shoot the morning after. Definitely tiring, but one of the best experiences I've ever had. So we had, of course, to wear our face mask while we were on our way to the lobby. So when our photographer picked us up and then we had to wear our face mask in the vehicle and the photographer had cracked open the front um, windows on the, in the vehicle as it was also a policy that he had to have the windows open. But it was not a problem. The wind didn't reach me. I didn't mess up my hair. So that wasn't a concern. Then when we got to the park, we, me and my husband had to wear our face masks at any point when we were not getting our picture taken. So my husband, since he had the pockets or he was able to move easier, would just quickly grab our face masks, put it off to the side, and we'd get our pictures taken, and then masks would come back on. Got it. Okay. So when you were planning your wedding, what were some of the most important aspects where you focused your attention or your budget? My focus was I wanted it to be in a park. I just feel like, of course, all of it's Disney, but I just wanted for it to feel like I'm getting married in a park where I can always go back and be like, oh, this is where I got married. So we kind of looked at our options and I I love Epcot. I think it's one of the most beautiful parks. So we budgeted so that I, we could get married there and have our celebration there as well. And one of the main factors for me was the Magic Kingdom photo shoot. It was just something I have always wanted. So we kept the wedding small in order to be able to get those photos. And I loved it. I do not regret it one bit. That's wonderful. Can you talk about some of the areas where you saved your money or your effort? Yes. So I didn't have any characters. I, again, picked Tuesday because Tuesday they have the cheaper rates. I also since decided instead of getting a lot of food during the cake and champagne celebration, we went out to eat because I felt like that would save money. Since it was outside, we, like we said, I thought it was beautiful. So we saved money by not getting any decorations. And my mom is pretty crafty. So she actually made the bouquet. So that way we would save money in that area as well. That's great. What ended up being your favorite memory of the wedding day? I would say the ceremony itself when I was walking down the aisle my husband was crying and it was just one of those moments where like I think back at it and it makes me emotional because we were just so overjoyed it was beautiful and even though we didn't have a lot of guests all our guests were precious to us so the fact that they came all the way down to Florida was just so touching and I I just absolutely loved it that's wonderful 
Now, you mentioned the musician disappearing before the cake and champagne celebration. Was there anything else that went wrong or just didn't turn out like you expected? So some of the things that I wouldn't say were just a little bit inconsistent. Again, the violinist left, the face masks being worn while my guests were walking down the aisle. And this isn't necessarily COVID related, but while my guests were walking down the aisle, the violinist randomly stopped playing the violin while they were walking down the aisle. So there was like, it felt like two to three minute window where it was just silent. And I did notice, I don't know if it was due to that, that the gaps between my um, bridesmaids and the groomsmen walking down the aisle were very large. So there was very big gaps between when they walked down the aisle and then the music just wasn't flowing as I would have liked it to, even though that's not specifically COVID. And I thought this is again, not COVID, but it actually sprinkled during my cake and champagne ceremony but it actually made for a nice memory because I handed all of us black little umbrellas and we were saying that we all just, it felt very nice with all of us sitting with our little umbrellas eating our cake. So that ended up being a fond memory instead of a negative. <laughs> was there anything that seemed like a big deal beforehand when you were planning and then it turned out not to be? I would say just in general, not, I'm pretty, I'm pretty laid back. I was even told by a, a lot of people like, you're a very laid back bride. Like I didn't have like specific things that I really wanted except for like those major components. The one thing that I would say was stressful was that the responses to any questions I had were very, very slow. I understand that my planner was busy. I was very patient, very polite but it was like a week before my wedding and we still did not have everything solidified. So the stress definitely did set in there. And I started sending a lot more emails being like, my wedding's in a week. Could we, could I get those last details in to make sure that everything would run smoothly the day of? Interesting. Okay. Is there anything you would have done differently knowing what you know now? Not anything apart. I would just tell myself to breathe just towards the end I was like oh no everything's gonna fall apart and then because she was so busy I was like what if she forgets you know like on the day of that like my BEO was wrong and I was like what if it's wrong the day of but it all worked out like there were minor hiccups but it's my wedding day like at the end of the day those minor hiccups were nothing it was wonderful and I would have just told myself like it comes together at the end enjoy the process instead of stressing through it, because there were definitely some moments where I was very overwhelmed. That's great advice. Do you have any other advice, maybe for couples who are wondering if they should go through with their Disney wedding or put it off? I would say it depends on the individual's vision. If it's like a small wedding, I would say go for it. It was still a wonderful experience. I didn't think, to me personally, like having to wear masks was not an issue everything that I wanted was still able to happen except for the fireworks but it was still magical if someone wants like a bigger wedding I know right now with the venue capacities and things like that then I would say to think it through one other thing I forgot to mention is I love the cake and champagne celebration but me and my husband did agree that it was not, if I'm being honest, it was not quite the same as it would have been if COVID hadn't happened since we were kind of all forced to be far apart while we were eating. It felt a little bit, I don't want the word to be awkward, but like there was no where I would look around and everyone was mingling since it was like maybe two people at a table where they were having to kind of almost try to like shout across the area. So we did notice that the cake and champagne celebration might wasn't as close-knit as we would have liked due to COVID. But again, we completely understood and we were willing to sacrifice just a few details in order to have our Disney wedding. Okay, that's really great advice and definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. Well, Jasmine, I think you've offered a lot of great tips and ideas on the show today, and I appreciate you taking the time. No, thank you for having me. That's our show for today. I'm your host, Carrie Hayward, inviting you to join me again next week for another episode of the Disney Wedding Podcast. 
In the meantime, send your comments, questions, and suggestions to info at disneyweddingpodcast.com. Past shows are available in iTunes and on the show site, disneyweddingpodcast.com. And for instant answers to all your Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings questions, check out Carrie Hayward's Fairy Tale Weddings Guide, available as an interactive ebook with continual free updates at fairytaleweddingsguide.com.